Brothers and sisters, any Christians that's coming to you with Galatians 3.28, you have to wonder why they start there. Somehow, someway, brothers and sisters, the Christians are not about context. They are about reflex. They want you to see a vision. Well, me and you, because we love God, we're going to start in verse 23, Galatians 3.23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Who was kept under the law? And what does it mean to be under the law? How come you Christian pastors have never told them what it meant to be under the law? So we got to show them everything. Let's turn the page because we're coming back to Galatians. The book of Hebrews seven eleven. Therefore, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, under the priesthood means under the law. The priesthood gave the law. The people received the law. The law of what? The priesthood, which was sacrifice and offerings in a temple. That's what it was. You don't want to tell them that. I wonder why. Let's, come on now, leave it in me. Let's go right over, chapter over. Hebrews 9, verse 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He's talking about Christ. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions which were under the First Testament. Under the First Testament means under the law. To be under the law was to be under the priesthood. See, the first testament, let's go to Hebrews 9 and 1. Then verily, the first covenant, covenant testament, had also divine service and a worldly sanctuary. See, it dealt with the sacrifice. To be under the law was to be under the priesthood, sacrifice. Now, let's look at this, brothers and sisters, again. Pay attention. Before, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. <gasps> so we were kept under the law until the revealing of faith from the Messiah. Now, who was the we that were kept under the law? Let's go over and investigate. Again, Deuteronomy. 10 and 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul? So God required one nation to serve him. Don't see all of them. You can't take it back to Adam. Look at this. We, we tell you what to do. So what we want to do is move. Let's go right on along. The Psalms 105, verse 8. He remembereth his covenants forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Ah, the covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob and to Israel, in Israel alone, for an everlasting covenant. God never made this covenant with all nations. Flea, what's going on? Let's do some more reading, because that's what I like. The book of Psalms 147, 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Well, I'll be. When it came to the law, God never dealt with all nations. That's Israel. Look, look, let's read it again. He showeth his word unto Jacob and his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. David said, praise the Lord. They never knew your statutes. So this is beginning to look like all nations You Christians get where I'm going with this. All nations were not under the law. Only Israel was. Again, we play, we play the game 
I'm just going slow, brothers and sisters. I'm just whistling in the wind. The book of Amos 3. The book of Amos 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. <sighs> you only I have known of all the families. And you, <laughs> I laugh, God never knew anyone but Israel. Confirmed in Isaiah 63. See, these Christians, you keep falling for that crap white theology gets you. I fall for it. The book of Isaiah 63, 19. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them, the other nations. And they were not called by thy name, the other nations. We're the only nation that was called. But when we get to Galatians 3, hold on, I'm just going back. Yeah, I don't want you to forget the thought. Galatians 3, verse 23. But before faith came we, who is this we? See, a lot of Christians don't understand that Paul is writing to a sect in Galatia, not all Galatians. That's why it says, let me, let me mark it here, in Acts 18. See, they like to leave off the details, but I'm thinking, brothers and sisters, it is Acts 18, verse 23. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening the disciples of Christ. So there were Jews in Galatia. That's what they don't want to tell you. They were Jews there. Disciples, Jews. They were to hear the word first. So when we go, no, when we go back to Galatians 3.23, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed by the Messiah. Watch this now. The only ones that were under the law was Israel. No other nation. So we were kept under it. But here's why they don't read this. Here's the verse. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. Whose? Who did you read? Israel. All nations were none of the law. God never even knew them. To bring us unto Christ. Stop it. That's the bomb. That's the bombshell. To bring who was on the law to Christ. It wasn't to bring all nations to Christ. It was to bring who was on the law to Christ. That we that were under the law, to, under the law, the schoolmaster, might be justified by faith. Not all nations. Why do you Christians leave these two verses off? They're key. So when they when they try to go to Galatians three twenty eight, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor free male, for ye are all one in Christ. Wait a minute, who's the letter to? How could, look, let me do this real quick. Let me do this real quick. The book of John, the book of John, let's see if I can get there quick enough to get this in, brothers and sisters. I wasn't prepared for this page. I just wanted you to see. The book of John chapter 18, so too much turning. Verse 31, then Pilate said unto him, take ye him and judge him according to your law. Why did a Roman tell a Jew to take him and judge him according to your law? Because it wasn't my law. Romans did not keep Jewish law. For, let me show you. See, this is this is what I mean. The book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 21. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Judaism was the custom that it was unlawful for Romans to receive. They were not going around learning Judaism. Romans wasn't doing that. The Christians try to have y'all think they're doing it. No. It was against their law to even go that direction. But they'll never show you this. Brothers and sisters, if they're not reading unto you Galatians 3, 23, 24, don't even listen to them. 
It doesn't make sense for Paul to say that in one verse, knowing this 